vital element of what we're doing here at UFCsecrets.com is tracking data and statistics on all UFC events. So that's 25 years worth, over 5,000 fights, 468 events, 11,000 rounds, 851 hours worth of total fight time. The idea here is that we're going to bring you context to everything that we're talking about in terms of mixed martial art technique and actually bring you um, data that's going to help you change and modify your game to be more successful. So rather than focusing in on statistics for individual fighters, like what someone's takedown success rate is or striking statistics, we're more interested in um, overall trends and numbers that can help you be more successful. First graph here, we've got total fights, fights versus total finishes through the years. You can see that from 2006, there's a vast increase in the volume of events and fights that happen in the UFC. This we generally refer to as the modern era. This is when uh, Griffin and Bonner went to war. The UFC really took off and started to escalate. You can see that there was a plateau around 2014 as MMA hits its first real kind of uh, saturation point, if you like, a total of 491 fights that year, and that hasn't been topped since. The record amount of total finishes that we see in the green here was in 2015, that was 249 finishes. Now we start to break down how fights actually get finished. So what's the likelihood that you're going to get caught in a submission versus knocked out versus the fight going to a decision? You can see that overall through the entire history of the UFC, that 22% TKOs, 11% KOs, so that's around a third of all fights get finished via some kind of uh, knockout and around 20% of all fights have been finished via submission. So less than half of all fights get finished by decision. That's changed somewhat in the last couple of years, but that's the overall numbers for you. 20% submissions and around a third that end in a KO or TKO. If we then break the finishes down into its own individual chart, we can see here that the submissions, there's been over a thousand of them now. So around 38% more than a third of all the finishes are submissions and around two thirds are TKOs and KOs. So you're uh, twice as likely to get knocked out as you are to get submitted. Next, we take a look at a chart here, which uh, shows how this has changed over time. That's going to be a little bit complicated when you first look at it, but effectively here, green line is decision, so that we can see how decisions have increased over the years. The gray line that we can see here is the overall finishes, so we can see how overall finishes have generally declined through the years. Blue line is submissions. Red line is a combination of TKOs and KOs. So again, you can see that you're pretty much twice as likely to get knocked out and uh, finish that way than you are submitted. And we can see that uh, so far in uh, 2019, we're recording this um, around March time, that there's actually quite a decent resurgence in the submissions. But up to this point, they've been declining. We introduce a new graph here, which gives you the overall market share. So if I took any data point here, it would tell you how the overall percentage of that particular element has, uh, or what point it's reached at that year. So in 2010, for example, all finishes in the history of the UFC had reached 65%. And you can see that's continued to decline over the years. So this just gives you a slightly less erratic line, a slightly clearer indication of the trend. So we can see that you get the overall statistics now are what we've already looked at around 20% for submissions, around a third for knockouts and TKOs, and uh, just under half for decisions. Again, you can get a clear indication here that decisions have changed over the years dramatically. They didn't even exist once upon a time, but they've increased steadily. And now they're starting to flatten out at around this rate. TKOs and KOs and submissions have both been generally declining as finishes have been declining and decisions have been rising. But again, this has started to settle down and sort itself out in the last couple of years. Next, we move on to finishes per round. Now, this is really interesting data because, again, it can help you tactically decide what you're going to do during a fight. You can see that in round one, there's an overall 28% chance of you getting finished. In round two, that drops to 23% and significant here is that in round three, that drops to 14%. Now, I should say that this is when the round gets full. So if the fight 
uh, gets to round three, what are the chances of it getting finished in round three? You see again the stats here for championship fights, rounds four and five. That's not for all fights ever. That's if a fight went to the fifth round, what are the chances of it getting finished in that fifth round? Which you can see there is 12%. But the thing to focus in for the short story here is that all finishes between the first and the third round. From round one through to round three, it drops from 28% to 14%. So it halves between those two rounds. So the chance of you getting finished in round three, a half of that of you getting finished in round one, putting it the other way, you're twice as likely to get finished in round one as you are in round three. It doesn't drop off quite so much in round two. So rounds one and two are very risky. And then that risk declines quite a lot in round three. As interesting are the submissions and TKOs and how they change between the two. So you can see the red line here is the chance of you getting KO'd or TKO'd. And the blue line here is the chance of you getting submitted. And the interesting stat here is that the chance of you getting knocked out or TKO'd drops quite considerably as the round goes on. So you can see it goes from 18% to 14% to 9%, but the submission total doesn't drop so significantly between round one and two. So in round one, it's 10%. In round two, it's 9%. And then it starts to drop off in round three, it's 5%. In other words, submissions are still kind of similar threat level in round one and two, and then they drop off significantly in round three, whereas the uh, chance of you getting knocked out stays high in round one, but then drops off at a similar kind of rate between round two and round three. Again, if you think about this tactically, you're going to want to pay particular attention to your striking defense in round one. And then you can take a few more chances as the fight progresses. But you want to be particularly careful over the submission defense in rounds one and two. And by the time you get to round three, then that threat starts to reduce quite a bit. Focusing in on submissions for the last parts here. So this is the total volume of submissions. You can see it hit its high point in 2014 with 92 submission finishes. And it was very close again in 2018. So last year, there were 91 submissions, just slightly in second place. Given that there were overall uh, less volume of fights last year, then that's uh, a pretty impressive number. And we'll see that again reflected here. So if we move on to see the total amount of fights finished via submission year on year in the UFC. So this is percentage wise now. And see, once it starts to settle down, its high point was here around 2007 where around 30% of all fights were finished via submission. That's been generally on the decline. You can see that in, again in 2014 here, it was around 18%. 19.2% is what we got last year. So there's some evidence here that the submissions are actually coming back and uh, they've finished their decline, they've finished plateauing, if you like, around this phase. And there's a potential uplift in submissions again as they come back into the game. Interestingly, again, a third of the way into the year or a quarter of the way into the year as we are right now the 2019 submissions were on 24 percent if it stays that way that would obviously be a major story this year but it's probably likely to settle back down to more like the 18 19 percent we'll keep an eye on that and see how it goes the overall uh, submission line talking about market share year on year you can see that steady decline and how it flattens out and starts to settle down in the last couple of years now so that decline isn't continuing, as we can see. Now, this next graph is probably one of the most useful in terms of informing your game. Here, what we do is we break down the submissions into whether they're attacking the neck or whether they're attacking the limbs. And then in terms of the limbs, we break it down further into whether it's attacking the arms or whether it's attacking the legs. This is a pretty amazing story when you look at it. That's 80% of all submissions happening on the neck. And so it's basically eight out of 10 submissions are going to attack your neck. And then just two out of 10 submissions are going to happen on your limbs. And there's a very small slice of this, which actually happens on the legs. So leg submissions only accounting for less than 4% of everything that's happened in the UFC. So obviously the story there is watch your neck, make sure you're defending your neck as a priority because the limb uh, submissions are far less prolific. Now, it might be tempting to think that the limb submissions have become more of a thing over the last few years, especially as we see leg locks being so dominant in kind of grappling only no gi tournaments. But that's just not the case. 
So if we look at this next graph, this breaks down again, the submission types year on year. The major blue line here is the neck. The major purple line here are the limbs. And then the two gray lines are formation of how the legs and the arms break down. Let's just look at this leg one first. You can see, um, despite what you may think, that there is no significant uplift as yet in the amount of leg submissions that are finishing fights at high level MMA in the UFC. And we can see that the trend on the neck is only getting stronger. So last year it had its uh, highest percentage ever. There were 91% finishes on the neck. That's, that's incredible. Nine out of 10 submissions happened on the neck and only one out of 10 happened on the limbs. If we break that down a bit further and actually get into which submissions are the best, we've got a list here of every submission that's ever had more than three submissions. We've got total submission lists elsewhere on the site, but this one just gives everything with greater than three submissions. So right from the Von Flu choke up to the dominant rear naked choke. And here you can see just how dominant that rear naked choke is. It's uh, 392 total submissions at the time of us publishing in this. That's pretty much double its nearest rival of the guillotine choke. If you see the difference between some of the uh, submissions that you probably think are pretty fundamental, pretty primary submissions, especially if you look at stuff like the uh, triangle choke here, you can see that triangle choke only has 68 total submissions for comparison. So the rear naked choke way and above something like a triangle choke. If we break this down just a bit more visually, you can see again, this huge slice here is the rear naked choke and uh, the guillotine choke half as much again, pretty much from there, or less than less than half of what there is on the rate rear naked choke. But you can see this massive slice of these two core attacks. So if you had an awesome guillotine choke defense and a great rear naked choke defense, you'd be getting way more than 50% of your submission defense is done right there. If you throw in a bit of good armbar defense as well, then you're covering two thirds or almost 70% of all submissions. We look at then how, again, these uh, top five submissions, so the rear naked choke, guillotine choke, arm bar, triangle choke, arm triangle and Kimura, those are the current top five, how they've trended over the years. And the story here is that there's three winners or three that are steady inclining and two that are on a bit of a decline. So the inclining ones, arm triangle choke, which is, still in a bit of market share, even though it's the lowest one in the top five, it's increasing its traction. We see that the guillotine choke here, fairly steady in the last few years, but has generally been on the rise. And the rear naked choke just continues its dominance up and up and up through the years to its uh, high point in 2018. And the ones that are uh, losing traction over time, the arm bar here on the yellow line, you can see from its uh, once upon a time high, of being the best submission for this period here in the early 2000s, now fallen into uh, third place with 15% of the overall submissions. And also the triangle choke went for a period where it was uh, on a relative high, but then fallen off somewhat in the last few years and um, being caught up on by the arm triangle choke. So that's a decent overview of all the kinds of submission statistics. There's way more detail on the site. If you want to check it out in uh, a more comprehensive way, then go to ufcsecrets.com and have a look at our statistics section. Um, there's a lot of detail in there. We track each individual submission and how that breaks down, um, stats around male and female fights, stats around your uh, chances of surviving various rounds and the kinds of finishes per round. There's some uh, really interesting stuff in there. Go check it out.